Hey, Jody here. Today we're doing a little stick welding, some very basic stick welding practice, padding beads. Stacking one bead on top of the previous bead on a piece of plate and trying to do it in such a way that there are no low valleys and things are uniform. And going left to right, right to left, thinking about rod angle, thinking about arc length, doing it very intentionally. When you're padding beads, this is a skill that is, is, is sort of a building block that will pay dividends later in your welding career. If you're a welding student, don't shortcut the padding beads exercise because whether you're doing build up on a shaft repair, doing hard facing on heavy equipment, or a pipe joint, a horizontal pipe joint where you're stacking one bead on top of the other, this is where you can build that skill with only a little bit of material. So here we go, padding beads using 7018 rod. I'm gonna use a little bit of 6013 first You'll see why. Oh, and at the end, since this is close to Valentine's Day, I decided to pad a little heart uh, just for kicks. So I'll include that at the end of this video. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to be using uh, three pieces of quarter inch thick. That's roughly six millimeter thick material, but it really doesn't matter. You could use thicker metal. You could use one whole solid piece. doesn't matter. First off, I'm going to tack these together. And then I'm going to run a border around all four sides with 6013 rod using DCEN on about 105 to 110 amps. Each machine is different, so it, it may vary a little bit on yours, but that's going to be in the ballpark. I'm running DCEN just because running on a very edge like that doesn't require much heat. It's very easy to strike the rod and restart, and so you'll see what I'm talking about right here. I'm just letting that puddle just barely tie into the corner there. I want a border around this thing. I want a good straight line to start on to stack my first beads. And 6013 is an easy way to do it. Also, it gives you an opportunity to compare the appearance, the way the arc and puddle react. They're very different. These rods are very different. 6013 and 7018 are different rods. 6013 is more of a general purpose maintenance rod in the USA anyway. 7018 is more of a serious structural industrial rod. In different countries, though, they have different ways of doing things. 6013 is used a lot in other countries for different things. You'll want to quench this thing periodically. It's going to get really hot every three or four beads. Dunk it in the water. Do not think that that's a good practice for everyday work going forward in the workplace on serviceable parts. This is just to speed up the operation. Now we're going to 7018. I'm using Lincoln X calibers here and we're going on reverse polarity. That's electrode positive, roughly 125 amps. All 7018s run a little different, so your amperage may vary. Start, these rods were not kept in an oven. That can also happen, though, just from long arcing on a start. I had a fan blowing pretty hard to get rid of the smoke here to blow it away from me. But for, for practice purposes, whether the rod's in an oven or not, it'll, it'll serve the purpose. So you want to stack each bead roughly halfway over the previous bead, or not quite halfway, but, but pretty close. And again, like I stated earlier, the, the idea is to... Stack them uniformly to where there are no valleys and no humps. Again, we're going to quench the piece every two or three beads. I'm going to turn it around now and prop it up just a little bit out of the flat position, just for the sake of comfort and ease. And just keep going. I'm going to alternate directions. One, one bead I'll go left to right. Next bead I'll go right to left. Pay attention to your arc length and your rod angle. And when I say that, Use a pretty close arc length to where basically you can almost feel the flux on the outside of the rod kind of rubbing on the metal. Arc length can be deceiving because the arc, the rod, the core of the electrode is burning up inside there and so your arc is a little longer than you think. Practice restarts. Don't just keep burning whole rods and throwing away the leftover. Utilize your rods. Practice restarts. That is a super important skill to learn is making a good restart. I missed it by just a little bit here. It's close, but I need to do a little bit better. I should have come back in that crater just another 32nd of an inch or so. That's what the practice is for. Lots of restarts, lots of practice. Keep practicing going different directions. Keep practicing your restarts. Think about each bead. Think about what you did wrong and how to correct it. 
and do as many of these as it takes to fix your problems and get good at stacking beads. Let's have a little fun now and put together that heart using a little paper doll trick here, tracing with silver pencil an inside and an outside. And then I'm going to make that a little bit more easy to follow with this Air Vibro tool. Now I started off with 125 amps, which was plenty hot for that quarter inch thick stuff, but this is closer to an inch thick. So I had to bump up to 135 amps. Could have probably gone to 140, but after a beat or two, it was just about right when things got preheated. So I'm brushing every, every bead, making sure to knock off any spatter. And I'm just using a wire wheel and a cordless drill for an easy way to knock off slag. Now for the sake of getting a lot of practice, I would probably just weld all the way as far as I could, as making as small a heart as I could all the way inside, but I've got other things to do. So I'm just going to weld a bead or two more, shine it up, call it good for the day. A little bit of soapstone and a wire cut brush will get this thing shined up like new money. Well, that's about it for this week. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. My online store is at weldmonger.com, and that's how I support these videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.